This is tutorial two and the final for the peep uh, shot list. So this is where we left off. This is what we had done in the previous video. And we got up to uh, the third row. We've got three more that we're going to fill out. So hopefully you've been following along. You have this uh, template for the uh, storyboard thumbnails. Uh, I've done a little bit of cleanup on the characters, trying to get them a little better on model, getting a little sloppy, uh, trying to race time a bit and not have these videos too long. So just for my own peace of mind, I kind of clean them up a little bit more. Uh, you, know, you can do the same with your uh, notes that you're making. So I'm gonna zoom in so we can come in here, uh, like before, so you can see clearly what I'm working on and you can follow along. Again, where we left off was an over the shoulder shot and in this case, we're over the shoulder of Peep, looking over at Quack, and him being well-framed, and we can see him. And where you'd use this shot is where uh, Quack would have dialogue or have a reaction to what Peep had said. So we feature him, but we keep the relationship between the two characters. So we call him over the shoulder shot, but of course, Peep and uh, our uh, Peep characters here don't really have shoulders, but uh, based on uh, human anatomy, it makes more sense. And we'll explore those later on when we get into more complex characters. Uh, but again, these are reference uh, for when you get into your assignment of doing the uh, Peep storyboard. So we'll go to the next one. We're going to do the over-the-shoulder shot again, but we're going to do the opposite view. We're going to have Peep here. And I'm going to try and get a uh, qu quack over on this side. So again, uh, size relationship is always going to be important. We know that quack is bigger than uh, peep. Also know he's got a different shape. Again, pick this show for us to work on first because the uh, shapes are very, very simple. And you'll see that we'll be reviewing those and exploring shapes and forms and simplicity in design class. So try not to get ahead of ourselves and uh, having getting too complicated with our storyboard drawing. So I want to keep it all relatively simple. So here I got uh, Peep down here with his plumage. And we can see we've got some background down here. And maybe a little bit of shading over the shoulder. Now I'll go over that with pencil. Yeah, you'll notice, uh, hopefully you see it a little more clearly. Uh, finally figured out after doing a number of these videos that uh, didn't realize how reflective the uh, lead of the pencil is when laying flat and uh, the camera looking straight down at it with its light source was kind of reflecting and making that line uh, virtually disappear in white because of the reflection of the light. So getting a little, you, a little better at the technology here. So all I had to do was uh, tilt my art surface so that the light was coming at an angle and not straight on. So one day I might go back and redo those other videos, but for right now we'll just forge ahead and see how it goes. So this one here, uh, this is the opposite view. Uh, it's over uh, Quack's shoulder and looking at Peep. So you can go between those two shots. You can have this one and then you can cut to a shot like this close up and then you can cut to this one where you can see the relationship for the two. It's having a variety of shots so that we can keep the cinematics interesting by cutting back and forth based on dialogue and reaction and emotions, which are expressions. And that's what keeps a story interesting and not just one long shot. We keep cutting and it should be seamless if we keep things working properly. Uh, People won't be really noticing the cuts. It'll just be a natural progression. Okay, so uh, I'm going to do a couple here that are options, but I really like to avoid them. Uh, but know that they exist. And that is if we have a shot of 
peep, but it's a straight on shot. And if we really take a close look at the peep uh, episodes, they avoid this shot. And there's good reason for that. One, uh, quite often a straight on shot doesn't look very appealing. And sometimes it's a little hard to recognize the character. If uh, you think of this in uh, everyday terms, if uh, ever have pictures taken of yourself, and what generally are all of our worst shots of ourselves, and if uh, you do have your driver's license or a passport or whatever, that's kind of the required shot, that straight on neutral expression. It looks like a mug shot. <laughs> that's another example of straight on is a mug shot. And they're usually not very complimentary. So we avoid this shot in most productions. And let me just write that down. Straight on shot. But sometimes they are used, and quite often you're used in a, a situation for point of view. And we abbreviate that with POV, point of view shot. And that is if two characters looking at each other, we can cut straight on, we cut back to the other straight on. And that can be very confusing uh, depending on the setup because kind of what happens is the character kind of pops into a do another character. What makes these other shots work here and here is we have established that peeps on the right and uh, quacks on the left. And if we maintain that relationship, it keeps the audience oriented. Uh, to where the characters are in relationship with each other. That doesn't really happen in a point of view shot. So again, I kind of ask that we avoid that one. It does exist. You'll see it on occasion in a production, but not that often. And again, the opposite of that would be, you know, we had cut the other way and we'd have a straight on shot and we would have And again, just to prove the point, yeah, go through as many episodes as you, as you can and see how many straight on shots do they use. And you'll find there are very, very few. And let me pencil that one in. That goes with live action as well. It goes with uh, more human characters in animation. It's just something that isn't used a whole lot, just for the reasons I was discussing before. So I would really try to avoid them, use them sparingly, uh, just not where we'd want to go. So the same heading, it is a straight on shot or a point of view. So if this would be from Peep's point of view, this one would be from Quack's point of view. But again, we try to avoid those. But we look at composition, and here I'm gonna do uh, another two shot. Uh, and what we're gonna explore and take a look at is staging, which is part of composition. And in animation, because there's action and movement of the characters, uh, sometimes the staging or the composition uh, alters throughout the shot and the scene that's going to take place. So here I'm just going to do a simple background here. And I'm going to have Quack over here. Again, he's kind of pear-shaped just to get his shape right. Again, eyes are very high on the character and he's got these kind of bowed legs with the big flat flipper like duck webbed feet and then we have peep might have drawn him a little big here but that's what we want to check and keep on model let me see if I, once I get the eyes down here, he's looking up at Quack, he's got his plumage. There we go. So you see in this shot, we have a lot of empty space to the right. 
and that might seem not the best composition but the idea is we leave that space on the right again if we start this scene with uh, maybe peep just finishing a bit of dialogue here and then what would happen say we finish this scene or, or at least this dialogue animation of peep talking to quack and then what we're going to do we're going to have a chirp come into the scene so that's where the staging is we set up the shot so we can have a third character come into it so in storyboarding uh we do these panels what we're going to do we would label the one as pose one so this is the first setup of that shot and this could be shot 10 and we're having more than one pose so we're going to do uh pose one or even better let me correct this is we can label this one of two and that's going to be part of the labeling process when we get into a finish uh, storyboard we're going to get to communicate with uh, proper labeling so people can easily follow our story so we're going to go over here we're going to do the exact same setup we're going to try to do the exact same setup got our background here very simple we're going to keep a quack in the same spot This time when we draw Peep, he's going to be looking in the other direction. He's going to be looking in the direction that Chirp's going to come in. And here's Chirp. He's coming into the shot. He's going to have his beak open like he's saying hello or something. Again, he's got some different details. He's got a little wing and he does have longer legs than peep so try to get the proportions and the relationship between these two as accurate as we can so once we've got that we can put that in lead again i'm hoping that you kind of uh, do the process this using blue and then pencil is a process you should get in the habit of use all the time uh, you know use the blue to kind of sort out and then you can tweak or do your lead pencil with more confidence and more detail but at least with the blue you're blocking things in and you know your compositions the way you want it before you commit to it and also for my sake uh, when you submit this and again you are to submit these two well this one page from the two videos that you've made uh, one page of uh, notes here is digitally submitting that so I can see that you've watched this video that you've taken these notes down and that you've got the information so doing it in lead pencil helps me see it and I'm hopefully you're going to be using a scanner or a good clear method of digitizing that image to submit it to me so here I'm going to label this this is staging again composition and this is pose two of two so what we had here now and again it looks imbalanced but now when we have the two characters it works out pretty good now the red pencil I'm going to put the red pencil in here because if this is a uh, panel of your storyboard uh, we can use the red pencil for some direction and some action notes for example I can put an arrow going this way showing that the characters come in and quite often we'll write in in a little circle so we know that character wasn't there and now he's come into the scene and what we can do too uh, the difference between the last one and this one is peep is now turned and looking at the character so I can put a little turn arrow showing that's the difference and the action is uh, peep 
rotates around looking in the opposite direction. So that's really where the red pencil comes in really handy for storyboard. It differentiates in color what is meant to be seen in the scene and what is screen direction and action direction. So that helps out uh, a, great, a great deal. So this is a, a setup with three characters uh, in a background and showing them coming in. Now we could do that again, but we can change the uh, position of the characters in relation to the camera. We can do that same setup with, let me see if I can get the proportions here, that we have Quack much closer to the camera. And he could be here talking away to Peep. And Peep can be down here. He's looking up at Quack. We can have our background here with the characters here. But what we can do is we can have Chirp come in from way in the background. So it would be a fair bit smaller now. And then he can walk up in perspective. So you know, that ends up being more complex animation. So if you're working on a limited budget, you can do this method of having them come straight in from the side and keep everybody on the same plane. Or get a bigger budget and you can work with perspective and such. Uh, this could be a good alternative to get some perspective going on. And here we could show that uh, Chirp is hopping into the scene. Because uh, we kind of will notice watching episodes that... Uh, People do more of a walk, Chirp does more of a hop, and uh, Quack here has quite the waddle. So it really helps distinguish the characters having different characteristics, personalities, and even their motion, and how they get around. There we go. So I'm trying to get him on model as I can. And again, these are thumbnails. Um, this is just to get those notes. You know, be using the big panels to for more detail. But because these are just shot sort of descriptions here, I decided and not to have a number of pages trying to get them all in one page uh, to show get our points across or to make our notes. So here we go. Now we can make our note here of an arrow that he comes into the shot. Okay. So different composition. So uh, it's a different staging. So it's still staging. And again, we don't have to label our panels that way, but I'm just describing what our shots are. And what it is, it's an alternative. And what we've been talking about in a lot of these shots is composition. We want to be aware of the placement uh, in relationship to each other, but also in the distance each of the characters are from the camera. So they're closer, he's farther away. And this one, they're all kind of the same distance from the camera. So it's making some interesting uh, composition by how you group characters and the position and the space in between them. So one of the things, so we've seen a number of good shots. I'm going to go over and show a couple of bad shots. And I'm doing this because I see those a lot in first people, uh, first time storyboarding. And you know, there's lots of things to think about when you're storyboarding. And composition is one of the things that kinda doesn't work. So uh, for example, if I have peep, or I'm sorry, chirp on this side, And then, if I have Peep and Quack way down here in the corner. 
That makes for a very awkward composition. They look like they're an accident. They fell off the screen. And in the sample, as I was doing it, you may go, well, that's obvious. That looks bad. Like, uh, for example, we have all this space. Why are the characters crammed down here? And exactly. But I'm putting this one up as a warning because I get this every year. <laughs> People have the characters falling off the screen. They're not featuring or creating the composition to, so we can really see the characters. They're putting them to the edges of the screen for some reason. So I just wanted to show you how this is not working and what not to do. Because good composition is utilizing your space. And in this case, there's a whole lot of space here that is not being used properly. And our being able to see these characters in relation to this character is bad. It just does not work out, uh, at all. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to label that and make sure we understand that this is bad composition. Okay. So again, it may seem obvious here, but it's amazing when you're doing it yourself that you may forget these basics here of what's a good composition. So, uh, so I put it in the note. So hopefully we avoid this one. The other thing is, is that in our other shots, we have uh, Chirp on the right, and even on this one, he's suddenly on the left. So how'd he get there? We have to spell it out. If he is on the opposite side of the screen, we have to have frames and poses showing how'd he get there in relationship to these characters. Because it's going to be very confusing if he suddenly shows up on this side, if, if we start to see him come in on this side. Another thing to watch out, bad composition things to keep in mind and I'm hoping you're making sure that you show that these are bad compositions because I don't want you using these as an example these are what to avoid Again, I'm doing the opposite. I'm having Peep and uh, Quack way up here, and even the top of Quack's head's cut off. And now on this side, I'm going to have Chirp. Over here. And again, maybe I'll have a little bush or shrub here. Again, this is bad composition. Try and balance images and characters out. This one, particularly with Chirp, for any reason, never cut your hair, uh, character in half or trim a big chunk of his body off because this looks totally like a mistake and makes the character hard to recognize. And we want to make sure that everything that we're putting in a shot is there on purpose and that it's clear who the characters are. Doing this is awful. Uh, again, if you did that live action, you had a big expensive movie star and you did that in their shot, they'd be quite upset that they look horrible cut in half or <laughs> half of them missing. So the same with a cartoon character. Not that they have egos, but uh, it makes sense to show them properly. So again, composition. This is bad composition. Look at all this empty space and where these characters are are bad. And they should be brought in to the shot so we can see them. So again, I'm just going to label that bad composition. Now, I'm going to take a look. I'm going to go further with the bad composition. Here we go. This one may be a little more subtle on what's not right with this one. It's our background. And that is I'm going to have peep dead center. And again, just doing this we know is not right because we're talking about our 
rule of thirds and here is peep right in the middle of that rule of thirds so we know that's not a good composition or a good position for him to be in good composition is we want to change that up so we can get an interesting relationship with him into the surroundings now the next one is is that I'm gonna have a quack he's gonna be over here and then I'm going to do chirp here so let me just go over that with pencil quickly again I might be doing things a little too quick here to keep them on model I'm losing my structure and everything here oh that's yeah that's where we use the lead pencil to hopefully fix any of those issues and then we have chirp now one of the issues you may say okay well that's not so bad we can see them they're all in the shot except for you know maybe peeps right in the middle of our rule of thirds here so maybe we could shift things around a little bit which you would should be doing uh, but the main thing is is that we have the exact same space on between the characters and from the character to the edge of the screen having them the same size and the same spacing makes for bad composition so yeah, I'm trying to here I gotta move this sideways I'm part of my drawing issue here is I'm trying to draw it square to the camera and I, my hand just can't <laughs> react well that way so anyway so uh, that is another issue that we want to avoid equal sizing equal spacing so these are composition errors that we want to be aware of and try and not do them when we we're doing elements and principles of design we talked about dominance so that is working better in this uh, we get more direction because these two are closer to the camera he's farther away this has dominance in our composition which is perfect we want to have uh, some uh, eye travel here and looking through the composition this one here is not quite as bad as this one but it's not the greatest and even if we did do this one if even if I put peep closer so we have a grouping of these two and then him more on his own that's not a bad composition on its own but this here, making them very uh, relatively small in the scene and having this sp equal spacing is really something you want to avoid as much as possible. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and correct this one in this one down here. So, for example, and let me, it's always good to visualize things and not me just talk about them. Uh, because this is what we're, the whole point here, we're visual communicators. We want to be able to get our points across. We want to be able to get our ideas down with pictures. And here's where I talk about a grouping. So if I put these two characters together and overlap them, it comes a more interesting composition. They come almost to be one object, which gives them dominance. And then if we have chirp over here, and because he's looking in a different direction, that helps space him out better in the composition. So let me just see, I'm gonna put our background there. So I might have even been able to push these two over to the left a little bit more and leave a little bit of space here. And maybe with my lead pencil I can do that a little bit. Again, I'm doing this with very simple characters. 
and you know that's not by accident this is so yeah we can concentrate on the the theory and the concept and not be worrying about complex drawing particularly at this stage probably a lot of us are not that high on our drawing skills or we're rusty for not drawing for a while so this is just to review what storyboarding and composition cinematics is all about but it all applies to more complex characters it applies to live action that compare uh, also relates to CG characters simpler complex these are theories that work on all visual media so uh, here we go I'm gonna write down composition and talk about grouping and that's what we've done here we've grouped these two and then we've grouped him and now where this can work for us and again I'm going to put a check mark on this one so this is not bad this is good grouping characters is a, a plus a positive in us doing that so what you can do, if this is kind of a shot, we talked about master shots before at the beginning of this, and you know we are kind of establishing the relationship between these characters. What this allows us to do now is do some cutting from this master shot. So what I mean by that is we can now cut to a close-up. Now that we know the relationship of the characters, We can actually compose some shots. We can move the camera closer. So that we have basically just peep and quack in the shot. And there it's an exact duplicative here but we've come in much much closer so we're not going to change the pose or their positioning any we're just going to get much closer to it so what was a medium shot we cut to a close-up and that's a good cinematic choice in this situation Little blue line makes Peep look angry. <laughs> Peep isn't angry very often, so we'll keep him happy. So see, just that one little line changed this whole persona. So we want to be careful when it comes to a finished storyboard that every line counts and what it represents. So here we have a close-up based on this setup shot. And what that means is, and I'm going to use my uh, red pencil again, is that if we take a look at this composition, if I block that in, so, you know, I'm going to cut off these characters the way we see them there. And, yeah, he's pretty much off to the top here, too. And if I bring this down, and this down, we've taken this shot, and hopefully with the same proportions of our field view here, we can see this shot. What we're going to do next is we're going to cut to chirp and he's going to say something and what's going to happen there is we're going to cut in closer in to this part of this establishing shot so over here we will see a big chirp and in this shot maybe he's talking to the guys composition wise maybe this isn't the best maybe he could have been pushed back a little bit maybe in my lead pencil I'll try and fix that because again we were talking before we want them to look into space to where the other characters would be. So I didn't quite do that in my blue, but I'm going to do it in my pencil. 
or try to. There you go. A little rough, but you get the idea. That now this is a close up of the other character. So what we can be doing, these three shots, let me just zoom out a little bit if I can. Hey, I got it right, good. So again, it's any combination of these shots, but we can start with this one and then cut here. We can cut back to this and then cut to here, or we can cut from here to here and then back to here. So it gives us a variety. And we'd cut to the close-ups if it exists. For this example, I've got Quack with his beak open, so he's talking, so we cut here. And then when Chirp starts to talk, we'll cut to that one. And then if they're all thinking and reacting, we'll cut to this one. So they have a rationale of why we're cutting and the different compositions that we're using. All right, so that's our shot list. Uh, you know, there are more. But for Peep, we want to keep this relatively simple. We've got a number of different shots and things to look out for, even shots, what not to do. Uh, so we'll use this as our guide. So finish off this page of Peep shot list and uh, digitize it and get it submitted into the, into the folder, submission folder, so that I can give it a grade and let me know that you participated, watched the video, and have made your notes. It's going to be really handy in our next project, which is you coming up with your own storyboard with your own story concept using these three characters. All right, great. See you in the next video.